The Mutual Broadcasting System presents The Family Theater, starring Claude Jarman Jr. and J. Carol Nash, with Robert Young as your host. <laughs> More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Good evening, this is Robert Young. I hope that by now, listening to family theaters become a habit with you. It ought to be because family theater is your program, you know, dedicated to your family. The idea for this program came from among you in the radio audience. You asked that we, the performers of pictures and radio, and the technical people, get together and bring you the family theater to acknowledge all the fundamental things we deeply believe in. We believe as you do that a happy family is just about the greatest thing a man could wish for. And we sincerely believe that prayer, family prayer, prayers asking God for his help, and prayers acknowledging that help, will keep our families together and happy. Tonight's play on family theater is a story of a typical American family named Jones, and a very unusual experience which happened to their young son, Bill. But wait a minute, rather than my telling you, why not listen to our original story by D.H. Johnson, entitled, Let Us Remember, featuring that young star of the yearling, Claude Jarman, Jr., and J. Carol Nash. It's been said that the sad thing about being young is that you're never old enough to appreciate it. Take young Bill Jones, for example. He has the youth for which many of us would trade all our possessions. He has good health, a good brain, and judging by the house on whose back steps he is now unhappily sitting, a good home. And yet to his pal Skinny, Bill is saying, Gee, I wish I was an old man. I wish I was real elderly. I wish I was 35 or 40 even. Yeah? What would you do? Nothing. I'd have already done it. Done what? Made my money. Oh. Yeah, then I wouldn't need to worry like I'm doing now about where am I going to get a dollar. Gee, one little dollar. And if I don't get it, I'm sunk. You still beating your gums about that? Gee whiz, Skinny, who wouldn't? You know what I promised, don't you? A guy can't go back on his promise, can he? It's been done. Not by me. I told the guys I'd meet him at the drugstore at noon Saturday and I'd have a dollar to buy him all sodas. And I've got to be there at noon. Well, it's 11 now. Don't I know it? Where are you going to get a dollar? That's you. Always bringing up a fresh subject. Say, you haven't got a dollar, have you? Hey, I know. Maybe your sister could let you have it. You ask Julie. I did. You mean she yeah, would... Yeah, she tried to borrow a dollar from me. Oh, that's girls for you. They got no idea of the value of money. Oh, hey, I got it. Your dad's home today, ain't he? No use asking him, Skinny. Why not? Your dad's a swell guy. Not this morning. Huh? He's in the den, working on his income tax. Oh. I don't know what gets into people when they're working on their income tax. You say the slightest word, and they're liable to blow their top. Oh, it's just the money. You know how old people worry about money. Yeah, what good does worry do? Gee, I wish I had a dollar. Well, look, Bill, go on, ask your dad anyway. If you use the right approach, it's a cinch. Approach? Why, sure. Sneak up on them. Let them see what a swell son you are. Then you're in. That's the way you get money from your dad? Well, it don't work for me. My dad knows me. But with you, it's a pushover. Okay, Skinny. I'll try it. You wait here. Happy landings. Gee, I can taste that soda already. <laughs> Fourteen, twenty-one, and seven is twenty-eight. Thirty-six, forty-three, and eleven is fifty-four. 
four. Hi there, Dad. Oh, now I've got to do that whole column over again. What's doing, Dad? Adding up something? Yeah. Your perception is amazing, William. Gee, thanks. Uh, look, son, I'm uh, I'm sort of busy. Is this uh, just a social call, or do you want something? Uh, that's funny. Funny? I was just going to ask you if you wanted something. I mean, is there anything I can do for you? Uh, yes, son. Uh, you can go back outdoors. Maybe you'd like me to add up some figures for you. I'm plenty solid on figures. Oh, that's strange. I've been getting just the opposite impression from your arithmetic grades. Oh, arithmetic. That hairy stuff after that gunk, your income tax is nothing. Oh, I wish you were right. Come on, Dad. Let me help. Ah, no thanks, son. Anyway, I've got the income tax done. What I'm working on now is the family budget. You mean what Mother calls a fuss budget? <laughs> She's right, too. <laughs> One of the other of us is always fussing with it. Well, right now, I'm trying to squeeze out a few extra dollars for charity. Gosh, you get plenty of charity already, don't you, Dad? Well, we try to, son. Your mother and I believe in doing unto others as we'd have them do to us. But uh, right now, we're trying to do a little more than usual. Something new coming up? No, it's nothing new. It's been going on for a long time, son. Ever since the war started, in fact. And it isn't over yet. What do you mean? Well, you see the papers. You must have read something about the hunger situation in the other half of the world. Oh, yeah, there? Mm-hmm. That's... That's why we're scraping up all we can for the relief campaigns that are going on right now. There are still too many people praying, give us this day our daily bread, and putting a real plea into every syllable. Yeah, it must be pretty rugged, all right. Uh, uh, look, son, why don't you go outside and play? Well, uh, listen, Dad, I really did come in because I wanted something. <laughs> yes, I, I suspected that. <laughs> look, you don't want the guys to be calling me a Nicky, do you? Well, whatever that means, I imagine I don't. Okay, then. You've got to help me, Dad. I'm really in a spot. So? What's a foot? A foot? Oh, to use the classical phrase, what gives? Well, oh, well, you see, I was coming home from school yesterday, and something... Well, something kind of hit me. Uh, not hard, I hope. I mean, kind of an idea. You know what I mean. So I said to a bunch of the kids, I said, meet me at the drugstore Saturday noon. I'll buy you all sodas. I'll have a dollar. Well, is that all? Well, I... All except one thing, Dad. I... I haven't got the dollar. Hmm. Look, son, uh, you got your allowance at the beginning of the week, you know. Yeah, but that was the beginning of the week. Things are high these days. Money doesn't go as far as it used to. You know, I've heard rumors about that myself. How's about it, Dad? Can I have it, huh? Can I? Please? Well, I'll tell you, son. I, uh... Excuse me, George. May we come in a minute? Why, of course, Mother. William and I aren't doing anything important. Not important. I wanted you to see Julie's first formal. Just got it finished. Come in, dear. Oh, isn't it wonderful, Dad? Isn't it just absolutely beautiful? Mm-hmm. Look at that. Hey, sis, that's terrific. You made that all yourself, Mother? Mm-hmm. Every single stitch. Well, it didn't come out quite right around now, here, Now, now, but... now, wait a minute. Don't start picking flaws. Why, I'd have sworn it came out of the best store on Fifth Avenue. Oh. It's beautiful. Of course, you got to give a little credit to who's got it on. <laughs> well, what do you know about that? A compliment from my own brother. Oh, skip it. I didn't mean it. <laughs> Don't let him fool you, Julie. We both think you're lovely. In fact, <laughs> if I'd only met you first, I'd probably have married you instead of your mother. <laughs> oh, oh, Dad. <laughs> George, what a thing to say. <laughs> well, come, dear. We mustn't keep your father from his work. And you too, William. George, has he been bothering you about that dollar he once? Uh, yes, yes. He mentioned it, Mother. I, I've made up my mind on the matter. Good. I hope you'll be very firm. Come, Julie. I want to take a little tuck in that peplum. A tuck in the peplum? Gee, what's that? <laughs> well, that that's woman talk, William. We don't always understand them, and, and they don't always understand us. Uh, here. Here's something for you. A dollar? Gee whiz, Dad. Thanks a million. <laughs> I got it, Skinny. Look. Oh, boy. A whole buck. Get that soda fountain ready. Here I come. I'll be coming around the fountain when I come. Let's go this I'll way. I'll be we'll coming take around the, the fountain the when I come. I'll be coming around the fountain with a soda like a mountain. I'll be coming around the fountain. Oh, come on. I relax. I'm coming. What are you hanging behind for? I thought you wanted a soda. Well, sure I do. But look, suppose we got kind of tired walking through the park here. 
Huh? Tired. Yeah, suppose we had to sit down on a bench and rest. Yeah? Then what? Well, okay, so we're a little late getting to the drugstore. Now, the rest of the guys give up and go home. And when we get there... Hey, wait! We got the whole buck to spend on ourselves. Now listen, Skinny. But think what we could do with the whole buck. Not just sodas, but banana splits. I'm not interested. Not interested in a banana split? Hey, maybe you never had a banana split the way they make them at that drugstore. But I mean Now that... just listen. They take two bananas, you see? Now over that, they put three scoops of ice cream. Three! Over that, pineapple sauce. Over that, whipped cream. Over that, chopped walnuts. And on top of that, a cherry. Mm -mm. Gosh, how can you say you ain't interested? Yeah, but skinny, don't you get me? I promised the guys. Okay, okay. You got to keep a promise. Oh. But look, if some of them don't come and we can stretch this dollar far enough to... Hey, where is the dollar? Huh? It's not in my pocket. Are you kidding? It's not in my pocket. I know I had it in my pocket. Hey, hey, you know something? You remember just when we came into the park, you took out your new Scott knife to show me the special blade? Yeah. And we looked for something to try it out on? Hey! And... The dollar was in the pocket with the knife. It fell out. That's what I've been trying to tell you. Gee whiz. And that was a way back there, too. We'd better get back there and find it before somebody boys, else does. Boys! Boys! Wait! Hey, hey, there's somebody calling us. Yeah, it's that man coming down the path. And look, he's waving something. It's the dollar. I, I, I think maybe this belongs to one of you boys, huh? Gee, thanks, mister. Oh, gosh, we was just getting kind of worried. Well, I, I, I saw you drop it when you turned into the park. <laughs> and next time, I, I hope you don't walk so fast, huh? You see, Bill, I was just telling you we should not have hurry. Well, two boys with a dollar to spend and you don't want to hurry. Well, sure, if we hurry, we just get sodas. But if we take our time, it could be banana splits. Banana splits? What is that? You mean you don't know? Well, I'm, I'm sorry. I come from another country. Well, hey, it's about time somebody told you. Now, look, let's sit down on this bench, and I'll tell you all about it. Now, a banana split is Look, Skinny, the guys are waiting. Ah, let them wait. Maybe they'll go home. Now, first you take a banana seat, and then you Listen, split it. you go ahead and tell the kids to wait, and I'll be there in a minute. I'll tell him what it is. Oh, but gee whiz. Go I... on. I can tell him faster. Oh, jeepers. Always in a rush. Suppose you did promise the guys. Oh, please. It, it, this is not important. I, I do not want to take a boy's valuable time That's to... That's okay. You gave me back my dollar, didn't you? All right. Here's what a banana split is. First, they take a banana and split it. <laughs> Chopped walnuts and a cherry? This is, how do you say, edible? Sure, it's super. Super? Yeah, good. Well, I, I hope you excuse my saying this. It does not sound good. Maybe that's just because you don't have such things in your country, huh? No. In my country now, we do not have much of anything. Not ice cream, even? Many times, not even bread. Gee, that's kind of tough. What country do you come from, mister? Which one? Oh, it doesn't matter. There are many countries like mine. They speak different tongues, yes, but there is one thing they all understand. What it is like to be hungry and cold and bitter. Look, what is it like, mister? Well, how can I tell you? You are an American boy. Maybe you've never even been hungry. Sure, I've been hungry. Oh? Yeah, gee whiz. Just last summer, me and some of the guys in my scout troop went on a hike. We went off and forgot our lunches and... What's the matter? What are you looking at me that way for? How long were you hungry? Well, we started out right after breakfast, and we didn't get back till late that night. One day. Well, gee whiz, I was hungry, wasn't I? Well, I'm glad you do not know what hunger is. It is a bad thing to know. It does a bad thing to your heart. The, the hunger that goes on not for a day, but months and years. A little to eat, yes, but never quite enough. And something happening to your heart that is worse than anything that could happen to your body. It is what... Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, maybe we should talk of more pleasant things, huh? But honest, mister, I want to know, what is it like? Well, no. But gosh, mister, I explain things to you. Well, all right. If you want, I will try to tell you. You were very kind explaining to me. 
But what I say is not going to be kind, maybe. Maybe it hurts. That's okay. I'm no softy. All right. Maybe the best way is for you to help me. I, I have not much words, but you have an imagination. We put them together and maybe we get a picture, huh? Okay. Okay. Oh, I like that word. Okay. It is so American. Well, all right. Now, you can imagine maybe you are a boy of your own age in my country. You have got now, I suppose, a comfortable home, huh? A good American home. And a family? Sure. Mom, Dad, my sister. So. But this boy you are imagining yourself to be, he would not have this comfortable home. Once he did. But it was bombed, destroyed. So you are living now maybe in a cellar. You and your mother and sister. Your father. Well, like like most of the fathers in my country, he was in the military and and maybe he did not come back. So so you are wearing rags and you are cold. And uh, as for food, well, it has been a long time since you have seen anything like good meat or milk or bread. A long time. But you have not forgotten what they are like because food... Any food is the thing that is always in your mind. Always you are saying... Mom, haven't we got anything to eat? Anything? Oh, I'm sorry, son. There's just a little of the potato soup we had yesterday. Can I, Mom? Please, just a couple of spoonfuls. Mm, It has to do for tonight, son. For all of us. Tonight, potato soup. Tomorrow, potato soup. Potato soup, when we got potatoes. Well, maybe Julie will bring something home. Okay, Mom. I'll wait. You're a good boy, William. You don't complain very much. Oh, I guess I haven't much to complain about compared to you, Mom. Now, don't you worry about me, William. This... This... Trouble will all be over someday. 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 But when? I don't know, son. I don't know. Oh, Julie? Julie. Did you get anything? Did you get any food, sis? Nothing. (laughs) No. (laughs) Nothing. (laughs) No. this looks, how should I say, impossible, huh? Maybe you cannot imagine it happening to you and your family. But it has happened to families just like yours. Much worse has happened. Things I cannot even tell you because you are a boy. A good boy. A fine boy. So what does a good boy do when his life and his world is filled with the dull gray ache of hunger? Maybe you go out to find some work, huh? To get a little money to buy food for the people you love? All right. You walk down to a street where once there were factories, though now they are ripped open by bombs, and the black beams are like ribs bared by famine. But finally you do find one building that still stands. kind of a job I could get here? Run along, kid. Please. Any kind of a job. I'll do anything. Please. How can I give anybody a job? I have no machines, no materials, no nothing. Now, get out! But let us say maybe you do find a job one day. It is a hard job. And for you it is doubly hard. Not only because you are a boy, but because you are weak from the long hunger. And at the end of the day, the job is true. But but you have a little money. Now you can buy food, huh? Real food. No more potatoes, no more moldy crusts, good bread and meat, huh? All right. Most of the stores are closed, nailed up. But you find at last a place where there is a little food, if you have money. 
All right, kid. Speak up. Don't just stand there staring. What do you want? Could I... Could I buy a little of that meat? Meat? Sure. You got a lot of money? Well, I've got some money. Look. Ugh, <laughs> money. You call that money? What do you think you can buy with that? Get out! The prices are high in the black market. And nowhere, it seems to you now, is there pity. Is there help? Is there even understanding for you? A boy lonely and afraid in a world he never made. So in your rags and your clothes, you walk and walk and walk. And you come maybe to a shop window where there is bread, loaves of bread, there behind the glass. And into your mind there comes the thought. Bread. Bread. If I could only get a loaf of that bread. I can! Come back here! Come back here! What do you think you're doing? Break my window, will you? Please, mister, please! Don't hit me! Steal my bread, will you? No, no, mister, please! You thief! You thief! I'll teach you! By little driven by hunger, you will sacrifice everything you have known as moral. Soon you will not only steal, you will kill to get what you want. And you and your gang will form a hard little island of hate and bitterness. You will grow up into a group of men pitted against everything that is decent in the world. But I don't want to do that. And someday, someday to your islands of hate, maybe there'll come another Hitler... And he'll mold your hunger and your bitterness and your disregard of all morals into another war. And he'll lead your generation into more years of senseless destruction. But I don't want that to happen. I don't want another war. I don't want it. Oh, excuse me. I, I am so sorry. I... I knew it would not be kind to tell you these things. What hunger can do to your heart. But I don't want it to happen. I don't want it. Well, who does? Because all the future of the world is in the hands of that boy you imagined yourself to be. His world is going to be what he makes it now. And your world, too. Hey, what's the matter with you, Bill? The guys are waiting. Come on. Oh, may maybe you had better go. Remember, you promised, huh? Well, I guess. Okay. Goodbye, mister. Goodbye, my boy. Uh, maybe I, I will see you again sometime, huh? Hey, Bill, what were you talking to him about so long? Oh, you wouldn't get it, Skinny. Hey, what am I, a moron or something? Maybe you would get it at that. Look, what we were talking about... Everything's on the table, George. Guess we might as well go ahead and eat. Julie has to get dressed for the prom, you know. I wonder what can be keeping that boy. Oh, you know how it is, Dad. He went out with a bunch of his friends. Boys don't have any sense of responsibility. <laughs> Meaning that girls have? Well, I will say that girls usually come home to meals. Well, he wasn't even here for lunch. Well, I suppose the soda took care of that, but still, I can't... Gee, am I glad to see you people. Gosh, Julie, you look pretty. My goodness. And gee, Mom, you're looking swell. Well, thank you, William. I'm feeling very well. And Pop, gee whiz, just let me touch you. Uh, son, uh, what's got into you? What was in that soda? Oh, I didn't even have a soda. Why should I want all that goo and gum? <laughs> well, that's a new angle for you. <laughs> yeah, and I guess I got a new angle on something else today, Dad. You remember what you said to me this morning about trying to scrape up some money for the relief campaigns? Now, don't tell me you actually heard me. I did, Dad. And you can turn this in when you turn in ours. My huh? gracious. What's that? Look at all the money. $3.43. One of the dollars is what you gave me, Dad. The other one belonged to Skinny. He had it all the time. Can you imagine it? And the rest comes from all the guys in the neighborhood. The guys in the neighborhood? Yeah, the fellas at the drugstore. I gave him a real pep talk. I already cracked down on them. You? 
unsolicited contributions for famine relief? And why not? I got a brain, haven't I? I can see the need, can I? Why, well, you've certainly never shown any signs of it before. Signs of what, a brain? Oh, children, children, please. Now, let's eat our dinner. Uh, thank you, Mother. William, will you say, Grace? Me? You mean me? Yes, I think you've shown that you're old enough to begin. Gee whiz. Okay. Dear Lord, we thank you for this food. We, uh, as we eat it, let us remember that, let us remember that the people we're sharing our food with are people just like us. And help us to help them to the, to help us to build us all a better world. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Claude Jarman, Jr. and J. Carol Nash. This is Robert Young again, and from your letters I know that many of you, in fact, most of you, listen to family theater with your families. And how fortunate we American families are. Look at our children, then think for a second of the children of Europe. Think of the story in tonight's play. Millions of them facing one of the cruelest winters in Europe's history. Their clothes in rags, and thousands of kids little kids, six, seven, eight years old, rooting in garbage cans for food. Now look at your kids. You have to admit, we're pretty lucky. And think for a second of Europe's displaced families, fathers, mothers, and children, all separated, all frantically searching for each other, trying to be what you are, together. Just being together would be their happiness, the happiness we already have. But that family life is what so many of us seem bent on throwing away. Our divorce courts are jammed. Our newspapers repeat over and over again the words juvenile delinquency. What's happening to us? Aren't we up to the job of keeping our homes and families together? Is it too much for us? All right, maybe it is. But we don't have to go it alone. We can get help. The most wonderful and powerful help a man could ask for. And that's all we've got to do. Ask for it. Ask and ye shall receive. Ask God to help. Pray. And pray together with your family. A family that prays together stays together. So pray together tonight, tomorrow night, and every night. Pray that your family will be together always. Our thanks to tonight's stars, Robert Young, Claude Jarman Jr., and J. Carol Nash. Before saying goodnight, we want to express our thanks to all of you who have helped make this program possible. Thanks also to Fred Mackay for directing our play tonight and to our producer, Bob Longnecker. Next week, our stars on the Family Theater will be Edward G. Robinson, Pat O'Brien, and Bill Williams in an original story by True Boardman entitled Work of a Lifetime. This series of the Family Theater is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this kind of program, by the mutual broadcasting system which has responded to this need, and by the actors and technicians in the motion picture and radio industries who have volunteered their services to fulfill it. Portions of the preceding broadcast were transcribed. This program is heard overseas through the facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service. Tony Lafrano speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>